So in this series, if you are not too familiar with controllers within Slim, we're going to take a look at how we create a very basic controller. Uh, and not only that, allow us to access anything on our container very, very conveniently and easily. So this controller here is just a home controller and you can see that I'm rendering out a view. So this would be perfect for any application just to keep things nice and tidy. Of course, from your controllers, you can access things like your database and any of that stuff. Then what we're going to do, though, is go on and we're going to look at RESTful controllers. So we're going to be creating this user controller, which allows us to grab a list of users, show a particular user, store a user, update a user and delete a user. So anything you'd need to do with a single resource within your application. Now, this is going to be really basic, so it's not going to be a full implementation with validation, but it will give you a really good idea uh, as how you should progress forward to create RESTful controllers within Slim. And we'll be looking at best practices and conventions along the way as well. So let's just very quickly take a look at the uh, endpoints that we're going to be creating. I'm currently using Postman. If you've not used it before, it's simply a REST client. It's free, so you can go ahead and download it uh, to follow along if you want to. So the first thing that I'm going to do then is create a user. I have a database table open just here and there are currently no users in here whatsoever. And of course, imagine this could be anything. It could be forum topics, posts, whatever. OK, so what I'm doing here is I'm posting through to this users endpoint and I'm sending it uh, across some body and this is JSON. So we're creating a user with the name of Dale and an email of Dale at CodeCourse.com. So when I send this through, you get back a response. This will give you the full record back. So including the ID inside of the database table as well. And you can see that just in there. So that's how we create something uh, in that way. Now, the next thing that we can do is show this individual user by their ID. So if we just come over to this endpoint, you can see that we can specify using a get request users slash one. And notice the convention here is always users and then whatever. So now if I go ahead and send this request, we get back that user. So it's just re-retrieving that at any time we need to. So what happens if we want to show a list of all users? Well, we can do this, but we know that we only have one user at the moment. We can go ahead and create another one just to see how this looks. So let's create uh, another user just in here. So let's say alex at codecourse.com. OK, so that's created that user. We know that that's going to have a user ID of two. Let's go back to the user index, check this out, and you can see that we now have a list of both of the users. So let's say that we wanted to update this just here. So let's say we wanted to update user ID 2. Well, we can use the update endpoint. This involves using a put or a patch request, uh, really depending on how you think about this. Put generally means that you update everything and patch generally means you update parts of it. But I tend to always stick with the patch verb just to make things uh, a little bit clearer. So let's go and patch user ID of two and let's change the email address over to alexander at codecourse.com. So when I send this through, you can see here we get back that updated resource and we see the new email address. And of course, this is reflected because we're pulling directly from the database in any other endpoint. So last but not least, we can delete a user. So let's head over here. And of course, we're using the HTTP delete verb and we can go ahead and delete that user ID two, send this through. And you can see that we get no response back, but we do get a 200 status code. But this is a 204, which means that it's successful, but there's no content. So it's important to use the right status codes. And of course, if we come over to the index now, send this through again, we only see Dale. So this is going to be a nice introduction to REST if you're very new to it, but it will also allow you to get to grips with using controllers within Slim. So for the first step, let's jump over to the next part and set up a very basic application before we look at basic controllers and dependency injection.